Hi everyone, and welcome. In this breakdown video, I'll be walking you through the workflow I used to create this disintegration effect in Houdini. We will be covering attribute manipulation and particle simulation techniques, and how pairing these together can produce an interesting result without long simulation times. I'll also briefly be covering the shading and rendering setup in Material X and Karma XBU. This is a breakdown video, and not really a tutorial, but if you're curious to learn more, I'm giving the hit file away for free on my Gumroad. You'll find the link in the description below. Starting with the mask, we can use the distance along geometry node and manually select a few points to art direct where the effect spreads from. This node creates a dist attribute, which we will then remap to drive the animation. Utilizing the smooth function, an animated parameter, and the classic rest, noise, rest technique, we can maintain full control over the timing with simple keyframes. For fracturing, we only need one side of polygons. I use a scatter and the near point function to create a class attribute which can then be used for a cheap fracture using the split points node. Next, I pack the geometry based off a unique per piece attribute. I convert the class to name, but this works with any attribute as long as it's unique per piece. We need to simulate points, so let's extract the piece centroids with an add node. When packing, I transfer the dist attribute from earlier. This means the mask point fop can be reused to retrieve the spreading animation. Lastly, I'll set the stopped attribute. We will want to gradually animate it from 1 to 0 inside the pop net using the mask. This will activate the points over the course of the sim. Inside dops, I use a pop wrangle with a simple if statement. This simply reads the mask and the animated position of the source points pre-simulation. If the mask has values of anything but 0, the stopped attribute is switched from 1 to 0 meaning it becomes active in the simulation. If this condition is not met, the points will simply update their positions to match the incoming animation. This is the other important line here. It creates an attribute that will increment on each frame a particle has become and remained active, which is useful for manipulation post-sim. The rest of this is standard particle simulation nodes, pop drag, pop wind, and a pop advec by volumes. I'll come back to this later after we cover the smoke sim. Once the particles are cached, I copy the packed prims back onto the points using the attribute created before. For particle rotations, I use the active time attribute from the pop sim to blend from a rest quaternion with a spinning one. Without going into a lot of detail, this is the rest orient, all of this is the spinning orient, and this blends between the two of them, using active time as a bias. Moving on to the second layer of the sim, the inner core. I created the points using a simple points from volume, point deformed it, and applied the same mask. I split the points into two streams using the mask attribute. One will be for sourcing, the other for collision data. I want to source just the leading edge of the mask instead of everything at once. To do this, I compare the points on the previous frame and the current one and then extract the difference. These points are then rasterized for the smoke sim. The sim itself is very basic, using only the sop level pyrosolver with some wind and turbulence. I keep it very low res, as we only need its velve field for advection, and never to render it. The smoke sim is then piped into both pop nets, where we utilize the pop advec by volumes node to transfer the movement of our smoke sim onto the particles. A neat trick is to blend off the particle advection by age, so if the velve field from the smoke simulation dissipates, the pop wind will take over, and you won't have unwanted particles left floating around with no movement. Finally, I create some flake geometry with variations, and instance them of the points to finish up this layer. I use simple SOP imports to bring my geo into Solaris, and rebuild the instances for the ash using an internal point cloud from SOPs. You can, of course, also just import the pack primitives directly if you want to. Moving on to shaders, the hand shader is just a bunch of noises layered together, which are also piped into the displacement. The only key thing here is that I'm using the rest attribute so the noises don't swim through weld space. The inner particle shader is what is doing most of the heavy lifting for this effect. By remapping the age attribute, we can drive the strength of emission as well as blend between colors as the particles age. Down here, I've just got a simple key and fill light setup. I'm using an LPE tag node. 
and enabling this checkbox so that I can split my beauty pass by its light groups and comp, which provides a bit more control over the final look. My camera has almost no movement in the shot, so I did use some dirty tricks, like making some additional Atmos passes by animating and motion blurring some noise in 2D. And that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to explore the techniques further, I encourage you to check out the free hit file available on Gumroad. Bye for now, and see you in the next one.